Glamour has always been a strong Pokemon on various archetypes since the start of Scarlet and Violet VGC. But since the Indigo Disc DLC, Glamour has seen a massive rise in usage with its new buff in Meteor Beam, a 120 base power special rock type move which increases the user's special attack stat on turn 1, then attacks on turn 2. This can be done in a single turn with the use of a power herb, meaning Glamour has an instant KO button in many scenarios. But just how strong is it? Let's discuss that today. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. But first, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. Okay, let's talk about one of my favorite Pokemon in the entirety of the history of Pokemon, Glamora. Now, I'm actually a former Nihiligo fan, but now that Nihiligo is not in the game, Glamora is sort of taking its place. Uh, but yeah, this Pokemon is like really, really good. Uh, ever since the game dropped, uh, Glamora has been a phenomenal Pokemon, and I have sort of a history of sets that it ran here, and then the new set that's running around. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and just get into uh, get into this. So Glamora's base stats are pretty phenomenal, 83, 55, 90, 130, 81, 86. Basically, its speed puts it just above some Pokemon uh, like Rillaboom, who hit base 85, uh, and that allows for it to almost always outrun Rillaboom, even with like a modest nature, since Rillaboom prefers to be bulky. Um, but basically, the value that Glamora gets out of itself is that it can either be like a bulky Assault Vest Mon, or it can still get value because of its ability by going frail, which is toxic debris. This is the big thing about Glamora, but it also has a signature move that we'll talk about in a second. Glamora has this ability toxic debris. If it gets hit by a physical attack, toxic spikes are laid on the other side of the field. Keep in mind that the only hazard removal that gets run in VGC is Glamora itself. Uh, now granted, toxic spikes can be removed by any poison type hitting the field, so if the opponent has an Amoongus or something, uh, then, you know, Amoongus is going to be able to remove those spikes. However, if we look at, like, recent results from top tournaments, you'll notice that there isn't a lot of Amoongus, com like, comparatively to, like, previous formats, mainly because there's so much competition as grass types. You can see there are, like, some right here. Um, however, uh, a, a lot of the top teams are just running, like, Ogre Pond as their grass type, uh, or Rillaboom as their grass type, or maybe both if they're crazy, you know? Shout out to Ko. But yeah, basically, like if the team doesn't have an Amoongus uh, or a uh, Glamour itself, it's actually very difficult for them to remove the spikes. They'll have to do some interesting like positioning stuff where they maybe tear a poison like uh, an Incineroar and swap it in and out and then something gets poisoned anyways. So that is a big buff for Glamora, knowing that there isn't a lot of Pokemon that uh, are run on teams that can remove the spikes. But yeah. Uh, getting those spikes in the field is huge for its, like, utility, uh, but beyond that, it is just a very powerful special attacker with a decent speed tier and some pretty good bulk. So, one of the older sets was an Assault Vest set, Power Gem, Earth Power, Mortal Spin. I ran Venoshock on mine, you could run, um, you know, Sludge Bomb or whatever, uh, and that was because I was running Corrosion back in the day. It was pretty sick. It was it was meant to catch um, Amoongus off guard and then two-shot them, but yeah, uh, that was, like, one set. Another set that saw more play is definitely the Focus Sash set. Uh, this would just run max speed, max special attack. It would hit really hard, but not terribly hard because, you know, you're smacking things with Power Gem and Earth Power. They wouldn't run Sludge Bomb that often. Power Gem was a little bit more desirable. Um, but you would smack something with a Mortal Spin, survive, hit it with a Power Gem, and then go down. Basically, Gamora's, like, main niche was hitting something fairly hard and then going down, uh, allowing for its partner to hit the field and clean up and, like, just having residual damage. Uh, that's a big reason one of its old former great partners uh, was Don Dozo. Don Dozo teams would run Glamora all the time. Actually, if we take a look, uh, let me search like an old Glamora team here. So this is a 2023 Portland Regionals uh, team, but uh, I forget how high they place. But basically, this team was running around. Uh, you just had 2-2-2 two, two, two Don Dozo. It was two very strong special attackers, another pair of strong special attackers, a Glamora, and then Don Dozo. Because what Don Dozo could do because it's so bulky and difficult to like take down, you would break a hole in the team with some of your special attackers or lead off with Glamour and another special attacker, get the damage off, get the spikes in the field, and then as soon as the spikes were on the field, everything on the other side of the field, except for if they had a poison type, would get poisoned, and Don Dozo could alternate protecting and earthquaking, and eventually things would just end up in range of earthquake and drop. It was a really solid archetype, and we saw it like farm a lot of events. Um, it's honestly like 
it, 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 it was one of the most consistent teams. Like basically, if you were going to like your first regional, a lot of people would be like, yeah, play Don Dozo because you could just pick it up and go. It was very easy to, to learn how to play. But yeah, so that is like another iteration of Don Do uh, of Glamora. And then like the earliest, it, earliest, the earliest iteration of Glamora that I can think of was that choice spec set that Emilio Forbes was running, I think. And it was just, you know, all out attacker, toxic debris and that sort of thing. Now we get into what's making Glamora phenomenal in this format. Glamora just gained access to Meteor Beam, a 120 base power rock move, 90 accuracy, that's kind of bad, but uh, still very strong move that raises your special attack on turn one and hits on turn two. Mind you, this is a stab move for Glamora. It has 130 base special attack and it gets boosted by one stage by clicking the move. Let's open up the damage calculator. Let's talk about this real quick. So if we take a Glamora, and we just take um, the Meteor Beam set. And we'll, we'll do like max special attack Timid because you know, that is a set that gets run. Um, and we just take that, right? And we put it up against, uh, let's go with like a Flutter Main. Like a reasonably bulky Flutter Main. Bulky special attack booster energy, right? This Meteor Beam at plus one is smacking a 220 HP for special defense Flutter Main for 74 to 89 percent mind you if they have like less uh hp investment let's say they're just four right there's a roll to one shot incineroar is a pokemon that just gets one shot there's a lot of pokemon in this format that do not want to eat the hit amoongus doesn't even really particularly like eating the hit 73 to 86 if it gets chipped that amoongus is going down and then at that point on you have a plus one um you have a plus one special attack sludge bomb that you can click into whatever you want. So you're doing like 55 to like 60 to Amoongus. You're two shotting neutral targets uh, with the sludge bomb. So like that's that's a big thing. Basically, the new Glamora, the modern Glamora, the Glamora of the future, it clicks it, it, instead of like, you know, clicking a reasonably power, powerful move and then poisoning things and going down. This new Glamora just takes a KO and then goes down. And that's really scary. <laughs> like, it just takes a KO and goes down. Um, and mind you, by getting Toxic Spikes in the field and taking a Pokemon with them, that speeds up the rest of the match. Things get poisoned, things go down, you protect stall, you, like, have bulky Pokemon, maybe you just get things in range of an attack, like a Wicked Blow from an Urshifu, that sort of thing. That is the new Glamora. So let's let's move on to a, a few more points I want to talk about. So we've looked at a couple of calcs. We looked at, like, like uh, Glamora's, like, old sets. Uh, let's talk about new Glamora teams, right? New Glamora teams are pretty interesting. Uh, it's performing well in tournaments. So if we look at like the Winter VR Challenge, uh, we see Glamora did take second in this one. We have another one at uh, 14th. And if we take a look at Portland Regionals, there's a few as well. Chump Across took second place at Portland Regionals with this uh, Glamora team, one of the earlier iterations in the Mon. Uh, but we do see Glamora again at 9th with Karsten Confer running a very similar team, um, if not the exact same team. And we see another Glamora at 18th. Basically, like, Glamora's having a resurgence. Uh, after taking a huge break in Regulation E, uh, in Regulation F, it is just back due to this one-shot button that it has the opportunity to click into a lot of Pokemon. So, let's take a look at these teams. One of the teams that I want to take a look at is going to be Chep Across's team. We notice that this is pretty reminiscent of the 222 Dondozo teams of previous formats. Basically, there's a bunch of very powerful physical attackers. You have a Defiant Ogre Pawn, you have Pownite, um, if you don't know how Pownite works, Choice Band, Terra Normal, E-Speed, or Outrage, uh, next to Sword of Ruin Shen Pao will one-shot a lot of Pokemon uh, because it drops everything's defense. And then once everything's softened up, Dondozo comes in. However, Glamora can also do stuff. Um, it's a power of Mon. It takes a KO, it poisons everything, things go down. Where prior, Glamora was a bit of a slower variant of 222, where you could lead off with like two very strong special attackers and then like soften things up for Dondoza to come in. Or you could lead off with Glamora and you could, you know, hit reasonably hard, poison some things, and then play for the poison endgame. Now Glamora fits both of those. Glamora is the fast offensive special attacker that can just immediately take a KO uh, and then poison things. And then like, you know, you just clean up with everything in the back. So this is just, I don't know, it's it's phenomenal for the archetype. 
I will say a lot of people hate playing Don Dozo, so you can expect to see a little bit more Don Dozo popping up here and there. Um, in my opinion, Dozo is definitely like an early format type of Pokemon where at first it does like super, super well and then everyone preps for it. And then after a couple of events, people kind of realize like, eh, it's just okay. And then it isn't like as necessary to prep for. You should still always have a matchup for it though. I think that not having a matchup for Don Dozo is a little bit of a throw, but yeah. So the next team we should take a look at um, is going to be Ryan Haig's team. It was the runner up for the VR Winter Challenge. Uh, we see, we actually have a Sui and Arcanine, Long Live the King, I guess, you know, and Sinnoh falling off, you know, El Bozo. Uh, but yeah, Choice Band, Arcanine, uh, a prank, Prankster, Rocky Helmet, Tailwind, Tornadus. We have Choice Vex, Fluttermane, Ogre Pond, Wellspring. Uh, we have Choice, or Focus Sash, or Urshifu, and of course, Power Herb, Glamora. So this is sort of leaning into hyper offense more than anything, as you can tell by the Choice Band, Choice Specs, uh, Tailwind Mon, and Power Herb, Glamora. So Similar to Don Dozo, this is more about getting things in range of your moves. So by leading off with Power Herb Glamora with Toxic Debris, what you can actually do is a few things. While it doesn't immediately break the Sash, if you're able to have a Pokemon out in the field long enough where they take at least one turn of poison, you're at that point breaking Focus Sashes. So what happens is you lead off with like Glamora and like a Tailwind Setter or whatever Mon you want to go with. Um, you'll be able to smack something with a Meteor Beam, maybe take a KO, uh, and once you take a KO and poison things in the field, breaking focus sashes, you're basically simplifying the matchup. If a Pokemon is gone, there are two Pokemon in the field, there's one Pokemon left in the back. At that point, it's no longer a what, like what happens if they switch into this mod? What happens if they double switch? What if they protect and switch? It's more they have one option to go out into for any one of their two Pokemon that are remaining. And it just really simplifies the board state. You get rid of a Pokemon. At that point, you're able to click your uh, Wicked Blows and like get a one shot or click your Choice Specs Terra Fairy Moon Blast and get a one shot or click Rock Slide and like chip things in range of the poison. Like that's uh, that's basically the other way that Glamour is able to play in this current format. And then, of course, we have uh, this team, Robbie. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm going to try it. Robbie Shaj. Uh, Robbie Shaj. Shaij, I think maybe. Shaij. I'll go with that. Uh, it's their team. Sorry if I butchered your name. I'm trying my best. Um, but yeah, so uh, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, Fluttermane, Glamora, Safety Goggles, Raging Bolt, Chen Pao, and Entei. This is leaning more into the hyper-offensive aspect of the team as well. However, it plays a little bit differently. Um, your speed control is your Fluttermane. So Booster Energy, Ice Wind, Fluttermane is like a really, really good partner for Glamora. Uh, it's a Mon that can't get faked out, but Glamora itself doesn't want to be faked out either because you want to try to get rid of the Glamora with a special attack. Uh, you're trying not to hit it with a physical attack because if you do, Toxic Debris hits the field and then the match gets more complicated for you. So by leading off with Fluttermane and Glamora, Fluttermane can't be faked out. You Icy win both opponents. Let's say the opponent has like an opposing Lando Eye, right? So let's do the Calc versus Lando Eye. So Lando Eye is very powerful right now. It's one of the best special attackers in the game. Basically, Lando Eye is forced to either protect or Terra Poison to not get one sh or not get one shot, but not take absurdly high damage from the Icy Wind. So if they do Terra Poison to avoid that damage, um, they're, you know, while they may avoid the damage from the Icy Wind, they're still taking neutral from the Meteor Beam as they would in their base form. But it's just notable that this doesn't have a defensive option versus a Glamora, at which point Glamora is able to click the Meteor Beam into it and secure a very clean one shot. It does 111 to 131 to a Landorus Eye. Now, normally Lando Eye would be a very annoying matchup for Glamora since it outspeeds, but with that Icy Wind Speed Control, you're not only, you know, breaking a possible substitute they might, they might want to go for, um, you're not only lowering their speed, but you're just able to, like, just KO it with a Glamora at that point. But yeah, uh, that is very notable. Uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring is another great partner for Glamora. Since Glamora is pretty weak to, like, Urshifu Rapid Strike, um... Uh, the Ogre Pond Wellspring is going to be able to swap in for it. And while Glamora is, you know, its main job is go down, you know, faint, and then let other things take care of stuff, uh, you don't want it to faint too early. You do want to actually get that Meteor Beam off. So versus like an Urshifu Rapid Strike, maybe you want to maintain the Glamora a little bit longer. You have Ogre Pond to follow me, uh, redirect that move into it. It takes no damage. And yeah, it's just like a really great duo right now. Not only that, but Ogre Pond Wellspring being a grass type means that it is, you know, immune to Spore, but also resisting ground moves. So it can actually switch in on uh, an Earth Power for the Glamora and then outspeed uh, the Lando Eye and then just KO it with an IV Cudgel. So that's really great. Uh, 
Raging Bolt, another Pokemon that does really well with Glamora, just because, even though they like share a ground weakness and stuff, it's a very bulky Mon. Uh, bulky Pokemon do great with Glamora because they're the sort of Pokemon that can eat a hit, protect, eat a hit, protect, and then just, you know, go on the offensive. Uh, sort of like a Dondozo. He's honestly, Raging Bolt, like if it had leftovers, it's a little bit like a mini Dondozo. That's how I like to play it. It's just like, you know, get everything in range of your like strong special attack and then like KO. And then of course you do have like the offensive mode. Um, Pownite, or not Pownite, uh, Chente, the other, you know, um, what is it called? The other like combination of the words. What, I can't think of, our, I can't, what's the word? It's like a musical term where you like, combine two things i don't know what it, anyways the other abbreviated name for two pokemon um is very strong assault vest entei is going to be able to eat up hits you know that is great for opposing pokemon taking poison but also it's going to be able to chunk things with uh terra normal e speed next to and uh, next to chen pao uh and just get things in range of the poison itself so that is phenomenal for uh glamora yeah basically i would say some notable partners for glamora these are the big three i would say right now uh, Fluttermane with speed control is like one of the best Glamora partners. Uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring for redirection. Don Dozo just like stall things out. But also just hyper offensive cores do phenomenal with this guy. Uh, Chen Pao, Entei, uh, Dragonite as well. Like any one of those combinations of Pokemon will do well with uh, the Glamora. If you want to get crazy, if you want to go back into like 2023 uh, Marcos territory, you can see I was all about Glamora. However, I was about Glamora the way that, like, um, someone with a, a problem is, is you know, it, it was a problem, basically. I would play Stall. I played Stall all the time. Glamora is no longer much of a Stall Pokemon, but it does work better on Stall. If you want to, like, you know, get into my mindset and play, like, really slow teams, yes, you can do, like, Wo Chien Glamora still. I would just not recommend that for tournament. But, yeah, uh, Glamora is a phenomenal Pokemon. It's dominating events right now. Uh, and I just, you know, I, I'm really glad to see it. I love this Pokemon. It's one of my favorites of the generation, uh, and I'm glad that it's doing well. But that's really all I have to say. Let me check my notes. Is there anything else I need to cover? Uh, Glamora's histor uh, history of sets, its new move, some damage calcs, Glamora's utility with poison, new Glamora teams. No, that's basically it. Uh, the Mon's phenomenal. You should try it out. Um, all, you know, I mean, the example teams are right here if you want to just, you know, copy them down. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed, you know, leave a like, subscribe turn notifications and let me know what Pokemon you want me to cover next. I'm planning on doing some more metagame analysis uh, now that we're done talking about the DLC Pokemon. I just finished recording Iron Leaves. That video was terrible, by the way, but I hope you guys enjoy it anyways. Um, but I just finished recording Iron Leaves, so I'm done talking about DLC Pokemon. Uh, we're going to talk about more about metagame stuff and also, uh, you know, some topic videos like I was doing a few months ago. So yeah, with that, have a nice one. See you in the next video. Bye.